Republicans and our, our candidates are going to run on the advantage that Obamacare will be going into the 2014 election because the choice will be very clear. There we go, Ms. Wasserman Schultz. Welcome back. I'm Anne Marie Morell filling in for Rick Amato. Over the holiday week, and the Obama administration was encouraging senators and the media to push only positive messages about the Affordable Care Act. One supposedly nonpartisan group, Families USA, was reportedly paid $1 million to find and promote Obamacare success stories. Of course, one story the Democrats didn't want anyone mentioning over their turkey and stuffing was about a seven-year-old cancer patient in Texas who lost his health care plan mid-treatment. And still, throughout all of the highs and lows of the website and the Health Care Act itself, it's a one glaring lie remains. If you like your plan, you can keep your plan. Well, not so much, whether you like it or not. Here to weigh in on this is our grassroots citizen panel. And seated next to me is Ernie White with Citizens Against Agenda 21. Doug Sane, he Hello. is the executive producer of the blockbuster movie 2016, Obama's America. And Michael Wilson, you are an, an entertainment attorney and you're also, I, I just found this out, you're also a fraud attorney, a whistleblower. So, Correct. Uh, Quitom, as we say, yeah. Quitom, yeah. which I said, I don't know what that means, so I'm not going to mention that, yes. but there you go. Okay, I, I want to start, start with you, Ernie. Okay, if, if the United States had such horrible health care that we had to throw away the whole entire thing, why have so many people across the whole entire universe been flocking to America to, to receive health care treatment. Well, I think most of the people that are actually coming to this country don't realize that we're actually starting to lose all of our freedom. I mean, we've actually started to give it back. So with this health care plan that we have now, we're losing all of our freedom. It's got 2,000 pages of nothing more than freedom loss in it. And the people that are coming to this country, especially those that are you know trying to flock here any with any means necessary, they're coming here not understanding that we had a free country and no longer are we free. We're not free with property rights. We're not free free now with our health care. We're not free in any imaginable terms. And we have nobody helping us. The Democrats are not helping us. The Republicans are standing quiet. They're not helping us. It's going to be a grassroots fight for the people to take their country back. All right. Well, 52 million people are scheduled to lose their plans. I think all of us will agree. I, I hope, I think we can all agree. We needed health care reform. There were people who, who weren't able to get health care, the, the, the pre-existing condition people. But, but my, was it a wise decision, Michael Wilson, to instead of reforming the parts that we needed reforming, instead to throw away the whole entire thing instead of reforming the part that we needed? But, um, overall, I think, it's, I think it was a wise decision. Um, you know, Ernie's referring to this flock of people coming to the U.S. for, for health care. But really, I mean, you're talking about this, okay, Obamacare, is, we're targeting uh, patients who already have a pre-existing condition, okay? Mm -hmm. That means someone who has a prior heart attack, a prior stroke, and they can't get health care, okay? Right, but why didn't we reform, make the reforms to help those people instead of getting rid of all the people who were perfectly happy with the health care plans they had? Why not just reform it, ref reform it because, for them? Okay, because the system itself was broken, okay? It has been broken. You can go, I'm also, you know, the health care fraud attorney. So the reason why I say it's broke is because look at some of these large whistleblower cases in the health care fraud. I mean, J&J &J just paid two point billion dollars for fraud. Okay, these are patients who are who are not getting the proper care. They're being prescribed medicines that are off label. They shouldn't be. They shouldn't be, you know, have their kids on this type of medicine. So you believe it's with ridiculous. Obamacare, there's not going to be any more fraud anymore. You believe? No, I think. I think. I think. Of course. Okay. You're not you know what? Have doctor seating. You believe that with 2,000 pages of Obamacare and the IRS actually being in charge of Obamacare, we're going to be better okay, off. Okay. So what? No. This is what I'm saying here. There's always going to be fraud. Okay. It's a cost of doing business in the healthcare industry. But what Obama's doing is he's enabling patients, people, our citizens, who can't afford healthcare coverage. Well, you know, I think he's, he's right. He's, You're gonna have an explosion in fraud because now we put the government in charge of managing the system rather than individuals. And we know that when the individuals are taken out of the loop, fraud explodes. Okay, well, California right now, they, they are one of the number one providers in, in Medicaid. In Medicaid. They, 
I want to talk to about. It's a about small one nation, doctor. California, in terms of patient lives. Okay, but there's one doctor in particular. This is a perfect example, Dr. Hector Flores. He's in East LA. He has 26,000 patients. He said he can he can take on another 1,000, but he's scheduled to take on another 10,000 under Obamacare. Doug, how is this sustainable? It's not sustainable, and we knew that from the beginning, and that's why Obama had to sell this on, really, a lot of dishonest facts. Uh, he said that it would reduce costs, and instead, you know, I know personally for my family, it went from 480 to 960. Mm. I mean, come on, that's outrageous. But that's better um, for you. We're <laughs> see it's not better for me, because what, we're, what Obamacare is saying is we all need to buy Cadillac insurance, even though we may not need it or choose to want to have it, and we'll have to pay the higher, substantially higher costs so that we can then subsidize people who hadn't been accessing the system the way they could have, because we know even in California that many families could have accessed Medi-Cal but weren't choosing to, and we don't know really why that is. But now we're going into it saying, well, we need to explode the cost of health care so that we can uh, force the youth or those who don't really need the service into the system, and that'll cover the cost for everyone else. But, what we're, but the law says you don't really have to have it. You can pay a fine, and you can get out of the system, and then only when you need it, you can access it. So okay. it's going to be a complete disaster. We've already seen he sold it on being revenue neutral. And in, within a year, it's at $700 billion. Now the projection from the GAO is it's over $6 trillion deficit on the way. Uh, we're seeing just, people losing their health care. We're seeing uh, now we're admitting that there's death panels on the way. I mean, where does it end? But the, even, even just cutting it down to the basics, if we're, we're going to have a short of, of, of doctors, we won't have enough doctors to provide help for all these people. And... Lord help us when if amnesty is granted, when, when that door is open. How do we sustain? How do we keep our country going on something this, this monstrous? I believe and, we and don't. I believe we don't. I believe that this system is being imposed on us. I believe that you're going to see us turning into like a third world type nation type system. That's I'm, ridiculous, Ernie. How can that, that be that's ridiculous. ridiculous? How can that be ridiculous? You know, you know how we're going to sustain gonna, it? How are you going to pay? Wait, you know how we're going to sustain, sustain, sustain that? We are going to stay. We've been at war since what, 2002, 2001. We're going to stay in wars. We're going to stay in Afghanistan. Obama just dragged us into this. That's how we're going to do it. Obama has dragged us into this. The trillion dollar deficits are never going to end. us Afghanistan? A uh -oh. trillion dollar uh -oh. deficit uh -oh. never going to end. Who drives in Afghanistan? Bush That's what we just heard. We're not it's going to be all Bush in this. trillions. <laughs> trillions okay. of deficits is how he oh, says it's right. going to get paid for. It's George Bush. Well, I, I will say one thing about Obamacare. One of the point, instead of making a blanket statement, one of the important mm -hmm. things is pre-existing conditions. Okay, and why is this important? Because the number one killer in the U.S. and in the world is heart disease. Okay, and so for people who have prior heart attacks and prior strokes, it will enable them to get the appropriate medical coverage that they need. Mike, I love you, and I, I think you're a great guy. I, I just want to say well, this. Let's leave it. Anytime, anytime, anytime the government's acting like the DMV, and the DMV is acting like they're going to be in charge of our health care, I start to get nervous, especially when the IRS is doing the collecting. All right, well, <laughs> when we come back, we're going to continue our grassroots citizen panel, and we're going to discuss principles in politics. Are the two compatible? And we're also going to talk about the spying of the NSA at the G20. Stay tuned. I told my wife, if the reactor did blow up, I would have been called into work already. It was about 6.30 a.m. 